Hey gang, it's Maria here from GoalieTrainingPro.com and I'm here with a familiar face, Peter Martin uh, from Pro Skate Goal out in Calgary. And uh, today we're talking, wow, what, what can we talk about today? Hmm, if only I could get some inspiration. Oh, maybe goalie pads and gear. <laughs> goalie pads sound good. It would be refreshing uh, as opposed to uh, the COVID thing that's kind of going around. I don't know if you have it out there. What not? I don't think I don't think Ontario is <laughs> not there yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish. Yeah, I wish. I think. Yeah, you know, let's talk about goalie pads, ma'am. Yeah, let's let's dig in. I think. Well, and this actually ties in exactly to what you're talking about with the COVID. Um, I'm interested to know sort of what the supply chain is like. So, for example, I was in one of our local um, stores and because, uh, as you know, I just like to I'm like, yeah, like every goal, I like to look at gear and there is like no like no new skates, no new pads. And so I was wondering, like, is that just a decision by the retailer? Because the shop I was in is, is like a family owned shop. And it's like, you know what? Yeah, maybe they don't want to be forking out, you know, so much money on new stock uh, right at this stage. Um, or is it a supply chain kind of thing? So what, yeah, what have you noticed in terms of getting the new gear in? Yeah, great question, Maria. Um, I think uh, from my understanding, talking with my friends that do own uh, hockey franchise stores in, in Ontario, uh, they're a little bit hampered by the... Uh, late arrival, let's say, of phase two, uh, opening opening up of your economy. I know um, here in Alberta, we were very surprised when arenas, uh, hockey openings were supposed to be later in phase two. Then all of a sudden, one day we heard, okay, we're going live June 8th. Hockey is going full blast. And I know we were scrambling here because we were doing a painting rental. So all of a sudden they say to us, hey, we're going to open up the store. You can open up next Tuesday. All of a sudden, uh, yeah, oh, we got, we're got. we in the middle of painting. That's supposed to take five or six days. Now we're scrambling to get it done in a day and a half. So it kind of it kind of caught everybody off guard. Um, as far as that's concerned, uh, the delivery matrix from our, re from our manufacturers, um, absolutely, they were delayed because we, we closed our store in March. And in April, when a lot of our deliveries should have been arriving, they weren't because simply we weren't uh, we weren't open. Uh, I was only open on a custom basis only. We were doing uh, virtual fits online, and then as we learned more about the virus and uh, what we could and couldn't do, we started slowly moving towards an appointment only basis where people were permitted to come into basically this area of the store, and that's it. Uh, we did the distancing thing, custom fitting, but that was it. I wasn't here. You know, no receiving staff to, you know, receive, uh, you know, the typical 100 box shipment that could arrive any given day. Yeah. So I think Ontario was caught a little bit behind. And my understanding is from my friends that, yeah, they're just getting their new stuff up on up on the shelves right now where um, I've had mine up on the shelves since. Uh, wow, well, since early since early May, uh, okay. we had CCM arrival first and it was an arranged. They would call me and they say, hey, your order is ready to ship. Could you possibly accept it? So we did. We scrambled and I got my two daughters. Great. Came yeah. down and helped me out. Yeah. We hand bomb everything in. And then uh, Bauer arrived right before our stores opened. So we've been fortunate, I think, uh, in that our government here loosened the reins a little bit um, and uh, let us, you know, slowly start to get back into into the groove here and i tell you what when the stores opened on june 8th boom it was it was a madhouse <laughs> uh we're so fortunate that uh, our clientele um you know I, I they wanted to get out too they'd been cooped up for a while and whether it was you know uh coming into their favorite hockey store to purchase their stuff for the new season or going to chapters and sitting down and grabbing a book or something. I don't know what it was, but I think people were just anxious to get out and, um, and get shopping. So I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are going to get that experience now in Ontario as things get opened up. And I know my friend's store is open now from, uh, I think he said 11 to five now daily in Toronto. And yeah. he told me, he texted me last night and said, wow, what a gong show today. So I'm really happy for him. Yeah, that's uh, that, what you want. Uh, you want a gong show every day, please. You want a gong show. <laughs> Absolutely. We want, 
you know, every sports retailer is the same, whether you're hockey, uh, baseball, lacrosse, whatever it is, you want to service your clients. You want to get back doing what it is you love doing and, and uh, appeasing your customers. And I think now, hopefully, uh, we can get through this next period here. August should be our busiest month uh, calendar-wise. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed that it continues to be like that and, and kids can get back to playing the sport that we all love. Yeah. What, um, what about guys that are, and girls that are doing custom, custom orders? Is there any delay other than the usual? Uh... Yeah, so we are finding a delay and it's not actually the manufacturers. It is the, there is a backlog in, uh, from my understanding, in, in customs in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So my understanding is there are not enough planes right now to bring cargo uh, from the Far East. So um, I have a client who's actually an Air Canada pilot. He told me that they are removing seats from their 787 Dreamliners, converting them to cargo planes. Wow. And that's what he's doing right now. He's not uh, per se, uh, 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 a, a f he's a pilot still, but he's not flying people. Yeah. As, as is a, he's accustomed to. He's still flying the 787 Dreamliner, but all the seats have been taken out. So, you know, Air Canada is scrambling too. I think they're doing what they can to stay busy and keep their planes in the air and earn some earn yeah. some of that. So they're doing what they need to do. Good good for them. And that's my understanding is that there's a huge backlog. So, um, you know, when I talk with CCM or I talk with Bauer, they're they're still telling us that their production facilities are are running uh uh running properly. Uh they're still, you know, quoting us 8 to 10 weeks on custom gear and um in the event that it doesn't arrive in that time, I've been told and we've heard it from different sources that there is quite a backup uh, in customs in Tokyo and that's kind of what's causing some of the delays. Yeah, yeah, and that makes sense in the transportation. Um, okay, well, I think let's uh, dive straight into the gear and I'm gonna go to the big question right off the top. So talk to me about the difference between CCM and Lefebvre. Uh, you know, the, like you just can't get on Instagram right now without seeing, oh my God, they're in Lefebvre. Oh, now they're back in CCM. Oh, no, oh, you know, and so talk to me a little bit about the advantages, disadvantages, um, you know, and and who might be better suited, uh, you know, for for one over the other, or you know, just yeah, give me your sure. opinion. Sure, um, CCM Lefebvre is going to be. I, I find uh, now that the season is getting going now, and for the first time, we'll actually have both of the products in the store. I think we're we're going to find um, we're going to find out really what's what. Right now, it's kind of an unknown. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go, uh, be invited to go visit Pat Lefebvre and his family at the Lefebvre factory in uh, in late February, uh, prior to the COVID thing. I, the COVID thing, and I remember my wife saying, "Hey, maybe you shouldn't go because there's kind of like this flu going around the airports." And I said, ah, "I'm fine, no problem." So I jumped on a plane. Pat picked me up at the airport, and and. Uh, I'd met Pat before during various trips with uh, CCM to the factory. I was fortunate in that sense. So, so Pat and I kind of touched off on, on what was going on um, with him, what their plan was for the retail uh, expansion that they were planning on. So, you know, it was great to talk with him and get that input. And then, you know, uh, that was a, a late night. We might have had a beer discussion over that, you know. Uh, Those are the best ones. <laughs> Well, it might have happened. I'm not yeah. saying it yet. I'm just saying it might have. Uh, and then, uh, bang, he was back at my airport early or my hotel early the next morning, picking me up, taking me to the factory. So uh, it was great to see them. I actually saw them produce that day, Corey Crawford's uh, 20.1 set of pads that he was wearing in the game last night when they beat my Oilers. What's going on with that? Uh, yeah. Uh, so it was good to see the, how they produced the pads, the, the, the passion that they put into it. Um, and, you know, uh, Pat was very vocal about um, what their goals were um, as far as uh, attracting as many pros as they could. Uh, but not just pros. They want to attract as many normal, um, normal goalies uh, as they could. Uh, their goal was, uh, I think, short of world domination. 
but they they want to get the they're they're proud they're proud of their history of their product uh the legacy that they have in in goaltending uh, as a whole so they really want to get that pad out so you know when i see the 20.1 and i see something uh you know the fast rotation system and 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 pat's dad explained to me uh how he designed it and 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 his ideas behind it and now i see it being worn by so many guys in the nhl um one of my favorite guys cody porter just did a nice little yeah. thing on yesterday on instagram explaining the frs system uh, which was very good. Cody, Cody explained it really well. And I'm not surprised because Cody is very knowledgeable and that kind of stuff. So to hear him, you know, really throw that out there and give, give the idea of what that fast rotation system uh, uh, is capable of was great to see. So um, unfortunately what happened because of the COVID thing happening so fast after my visit and we closed our store, I didn't order my store stock for the store. So right now, we do not have Lefebvre in the store. Uh, however, it has been ordered. We're pa well, patiently, impatiently waiting its arrival. Um, but we have had customers order it custom through us already. Um, I think uh, having seen it, having been there, I can describe, I, I took pictures when I was there, obviously, they see it on TV. I can explain to them what the differences are between the pad you know that they're comparing it to whether it's a ccm pad or a bauer pad i can tell them the features that are in the lefave pad and they felt comfortable with my explanation and and have ordered have ordered their pads and their gloves up so i mean um exciting times having another uh what i'll say legitimate uh hockey equipment brand on the market um and uh can't wait to see what what is going to happen this year with it does their price point line up roughly with the co comparable level in CCM or Bauer? Yeah, it's it's right there. I mean, you are going to pay a, a little bit more, uh, but overall, you know, you're looking for a full set of uh, pads, catcher, blocker. Uh, you're looking at roughly the same price. I about two hundred dollars more for the set. Yeah. So it's nothing exorbitant. Uh, I think it's I think it's in line. Um, I've not had. I've not to this to this point yet. I've not had one customer, you know, uh, express their, you know, oh well, I'm sorry, that's a little bit more expensive. That's too yeah. bad. I haven't heard anybody say that. I believe that they feel that the that the quality will be there when their gear does arrive. We have taken possession of a couple small orders that we did for customers, blockers, and catchers, and um, yeah. blown away. Customers are blown away by the quality of the product, and um, I, they think it's cool that they can get now something that was previously reserved for the upper echelon of the goaltending world. So I think that's a, that's a cool feature for a lot of the guys. Oh yeah. And, and all of their gear is made in Canada, correct? All their gear is made in Canada, handmade in, uh, in, uh, in Quebec, just outside of Montreal. I can't remember the name of the town right now. I'm having, uh, having a, a memory that's, loss here but that's okay. uh, we, we won't we won't grade you on that one that's all right okay all right uh, yeah i've talked like i talked to cody and i've talked to mike uzis uh another guy that got just got in them and they yeah they they love them um yeah. is there any other like sort of piece of equipment or brand uh that sort of that's turned your head this year in, in terms of anything pads helmets skates glove walker anything that you're like oh that's well wow, that's different Funny you should ask that. <laughs> Look what I, I have here. I knew you were, it's like I knew you were going to ask. Yeah, and you didn't actually. I didn't even send you the questions. We're on the same That's wavelength. right. I yeah. just, I kind of knew where we were going to go with this. So yeah. uh, to answer your question, yeah, there have been a couple products that really uh, caught my eye this year. So again, being fortunate to be able to see this stuff at, a, at, a, at an earlier date, i.e. last fall, yeah uh, with some of them even last summer getting to see what's coming out right now um kind of allows me to wrap my head around it for the next couple months when i'm ordering and and thinking about uh what's coming out versus what is out there right now what what the trend is for clients parents uh, and parents really are looking for safety when it's when we're talking about a helmet it's a it's a bigger decision than every year so what i find is in the past parents used to you know sit down in my store and maybe watch uh tsn that was on and the kids came over and they did their custom or their mask fit and now it's changed completely we have 
the whole family there. They're asking questions. They want to be informed about the choices they're making to protect their kids' heads. So uh, the CCM mask this year was kind of an eye opener for me. It was it was great to see the new CCM masks. So I know Carrie Price has been uh, yeah. wearing in practice yeah. recently. Yeah. And um, so that's exciting to see when you see pros going into a product that uh, that we're excited about. That means they're excited about it too. They want to be protected as well, right? So yeah. the cool thing about this new CCM is the liner. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see it. You can see yeah. the pods inside there, Maria. Yeah. So what it is, there's fluid inside pods. Okay. So fluid inside pods are designed to help the mask absorb different kind of blows that we get. Goalies, of course, our teammates are going to hit us in the head 50 times in practice. We know that, right? It even happens probably in your hockey. Yeah, <laughs> like the first shot warm-up. Ping! Oh, sorry. Exactly. Those are great. <laughs> we love those guys. Keep them coming. Not. Yeah, like, <laughs> not. So, so it was exciting for me to see this. Now, it's nice to see manufacturers addressing something other than just puck. Puck, uh, puck hits to the head. So we always have the nice uh, aggressive forehead ridges that reduce any flat spots on the mask to deflect pucks off. So that's where we see round, round everywhere. They get as much roundness into the mask as we can, as they can to deflect energy off. Because anytime you take a hard blow to the face, like in the cage, that's going to stick and impact you greater. Uh, but what they've done now is added the pods inside because there, we get other kinds of blows. We'll get a guy skating by the net where he could just, oh, accidentally throw his elbow up. Yeah. Hit in the side of the head. So now they're thinking about the other kind of rotational blows that goalies can get, where sometimes you're in a scramble around, you get popped in the head with the knee. Well, that's a different kind of blow than you're going to get with a hockey puck. So to see them paying attention to that and understanding the need to introduce this into their masks now, uh, was was welcome to me because uh, parents do want to know this kind of stuff. They understand that, well, he got hit with the shoulder there. Um, how can we approve upon that? So CCM has answered that now. Uh, that, and they've also put now Sigma Tex with the carbon fiber in the shell of the mask. So really structurally sound mask, lightweight. Lightweight shouldn't be, I know I have a lot of people come in, whoa, lightweight feels like it's not going to protect me. Not the deal, not the deal. So this is a great mask. It has sold fabulously well for us. People are listening to what we tell them. Uh, my staff and I explain again, uh, the importance of fit. Uh, sometimes you come into the store looking for one thing, all masks fit differently. So the player, you know, fortunately they have to be open-minded to, to something that fits the best, that gives them the most protection and, and that, you know, mom and dad are okay with, of course. So, so this was this was a welcome uh, welcome site for me this year, and um, sales have not disappointed. It's it's been a strong seller so far. Cool. I, I like that lightweight bit too because I think I think some and I, and I, honestly I think some mask manufacturers don't understand concussion mechanism, and uh, you know so they almost try to make like a like a yeah like a bigger stronger helmet. Um, yep which I don't think really necessarily helps reduce the risk of concussion. And then what I'm seeing too, especially with sort of the puck tracking and, you know, sort of leading with your head, yep. just anecdotally, but I've seen enough like in the last maybe three years of like some neck issues that it's like, hmm, it doesn't seem like I was seeing that many neck issues in the previous three yep. years. You know, So I think having, if you can have a lighter helmet that, that offers equal or better protection. I think that's, you know, that's a, a worthwhile investment because our, you know, our, our head isn't sort of designed to, you know, be carrying around extra weight and, you know, really yeah. moving that yeah, much. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree hundred percent. And then, you know, but I, the one thing I will say though, too, is that it, we, yeah, we don't want to build bricks, but, it, it is important again. So we'll go on to the next mask and I'll get to explaining where I'm at. So the iconic Bauer 960, probably, you know, all the way back to the Jerry Wright bubble design through iTech, everything. Um, this has been the mask that basically everything has been compared to over the years. This is the 
and HL shape that kids want. Uh, and for good reason, it's been a fantastic mask over all the years. However, Bauer did redesign it this year and the nice the nice change that they made to it, well, they made two great changes. I'll get into one right now. So I don't know if you can read that at the bottom here. Smack wrap. What's that? Smack wrap, man. Smack wrap is an energy absorbing layer that they put in the mask to absorb vibration. Oh, cool. Yeah. So a lot of that time, you know, you've heard stories that, Hey, did that hurt you? Well, no, it didn't hurt, but it got ringing in my ears. And well, when you get hit at the front of the mask, vibration and noise travels to the back of the mask and consequently goes right over your ears, right? So I think for a long time, they've had energy absorbing tape in their, in their masks before, but now they've come out with smack wrap. And smack wrap is an added benefit to the 960. The shape hasn't changed at all. Nothing has changed in the shape. It's still the famous NHL shape that everybody loves and wants to have, but now they've added smack wrap to it. And Bauer confirmed with me this year at Bauer World uh, that this is their most protective mask for 2020. Okay. So, but it is heavier than the VTX. Okay, so the VTX is a lighter mask, has the VTX foams in it, which also answer the question of the different kind of blow forces that goalies would get. Uh, but now, because, well, their technology has changed already since the VTX came out, I think about three years ago, this has changed and they've upped the ante now with the smack wrap. The other thing they've changed is made air channels inside yeah. the liner here. You can see how it's rounded here on yeah. both sides to allow better airflow. One yeah. of the things we did here in the old 960, what the mask was so comfortable, but the pour on XRD foams inside really absorbed the sweat. Oh, okay. So they've they've adjusted that as well. They've put a micro coating on now over uh, the Poron XRD foams inside to stop it from absorbing so much sweat. So consequently, guys are going to stay a little bit cooler and not be as wet. And the airflow that will pass through uh, will allow you to to stay cooler. So I mean, great great changes in the masks, and uh, it's 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 exciting to see. But I still have one more for you. Okay. Get me. Even more, exciting. <laughs> Even more exciting. So I'm going to show you another CCM mask. Okay. The Axis 1.9. Okay. Okay, so this is their mid-price point mask. What they've done with this, fiberglass, added carbon fiber through the forehead and chin. For those parents who want their 12-year-olds to maybe not wear a polycarbonate mask. They want them to get into something a little bit more substantial because kids at 12 are bringing heat, man. Yeah. They're using those Bauer CCM composite sticks. They're training with all their Connor McDavid uh, <laughs> stick handling tools and knowing how to shoot the puck better and better all the time. So we got to ante it up, right? Yeah. So what they've done is come out with this mask. And the great thing they've done is they brought it down to a size extra small. Oh, nice. So we are actually fitting customers between the ages of 10 and 12 in a mid price point mask. So it comes in right at the $500 price point and it's awesome. They've added, can you see the orange D3O in there? Yeah, they do. Yeah. You can see they've added orange D3O and a yellow foam as well. So yeah. the three foams in this mask now, the black, the yellow, and the orange all absorb different kind of impacts. So really they all like serve that. a different purpose. Comfort, impact protection, and absorption. So, I mean, this has been, again, the extra small, when I tell people now, because historically people have come into the store and say, wow, I wish we could buy a better mask. And um, Sport Mask sells a great mask, the X8. Yeah. We've had fantastic sales success with the X8. It's fiberglass based mask, fits great. They offer it in an extra small. So CCM said, you know what? Let's see if we can get in on this a little bit. And this is the result. It sold fabulously. Uh, great mask and it allows you or that parent to get their 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 young athlete into a great mask so i mean it's it's awesome it's great to see and you know it was introduced last year when bauer came out with the uh ix model and they uh, brought it out in a fit 0.5 so traditionally bauer always had fit one fit two and fit three okay medium large if you will last year they brought it down to a fit 0.5 
and it sold very well. So it's, it's great to see the manufacturers, the two big guys, CCM and Bauer, uh, listening to the clientele and what is, uh, what they want. And yeah. it's nice to see it come to market now. Yeah. And that, that actually leads perfectly into my next question, which was, you know, and, and yeah, like it, you don't want to cheap out on a mask but you also are going to have a growing kid or even for, you know, someone like an adult goalie, like myself who just, you know, like plays at a beginner intermediate level. What is, what is sort of the, is there a piece of equipment like where it's, yeah, like you don't need like the, the, the for the money you spend, the improved, performance you're not even going to really be able to maximize that you know so where so for example i'm right now i'm in the bauer x700 uh vapor x700 well well what's the difference you know going to the x900 which i know is the old brand i don't know what the new ones are one s pro right. or something or other but yeah. you know what like is it where is it worth investing that extra to get sort of the higher level and where is it like, you know what, like you are not going to notice a difference with this. Yeah. Great question. So we do, uh, let's, let's call them the, the direct league, the beer league client, the ham and nigger guy, you know, we, we get lots of those and those guys, there's nothing more that those guys love than coming in and putting their hand in every glove, putting their arm in every chest pad, so we get them every day and that's awesome. And these guys are always the most inquisitive. They have so many questions. Uh, they're looking for answers. So here's what I'll say. Most of them do not want to go to work the next day with bruises all over their torso. So consequently, I find those guys are not willing to cheap out on chest pads. Because there is a definite difference. I agree with what you're saying, Maria, 100%. You know, the difference between a pro-level pad and maybe the next price point down pad, senior pad, the difference isn't going to be that you're going to get injured when a puck hits you in the shin, right? Uh, they, all, they all have their strengths and weaknesses, but one of them is not that you're going to get beat up in the shins or in the thighs from stopping pucks. However, if you're looking at buying maybe that second price point chest pad, you're playing beer league against guys. Hey, listen, I have guys that come in all the time. Tell me, yeah, you know, playing rec league. Uh, I got a couple guys uh, on the other team last night used to play in the NHL. Yeah. yeah. Retired guys just want to stay active. Right. And they're bringing heat. They're got, you know, they all still have their pro custom $300 composite sticks from when they played in the show and they're bringing heat all the time. So I got guys that come in and, you know, well, look at me, I'm covered, I have bruises everywhere. And, you know, so I find guys do not want to scrimp on a certain piece of equipment, the chest pads. So um, we carry a, a wide variety of chest pads. We always have, uh, let's say, about six different pro chest pads in stock uh, at any given time. We customize our own custom uh, chest pads with each of Brian's uh, CCM and, and Bauer. Oh, cool. But the great thing is, is those rec league guys also don't want to spend top shelf dollar. Mm -hmm. So the way we try and kind of work around that is every year, everybody knows there's new models coming out. Mm -hmm. That's a given. So every year there's going to be three or four models replaced with a new model. So inevitably, I always have some stock left over, put them on at a reduced price. So what I find is that if, if Mr. Rec League player can get a pro model, last year's pro model that's better than anything else that's coming out at the second price point and it's reduced in price. They're jumping on that like right now. Yeah. Right now. So that's what we're finding. I think uh, they really find that this is the one piece of equipment they're not willing to compromise on. They want to get into that and whether it's, you know, when waiting a couple extra months, if they, you know, got to save up a little bit of shackles for that, or if they can do it right now. But I usually find we'll get guys come in and go, wow, guy, I really need this chest pad. Yeah. Um, don't have the cash flow right now. Can I put like X number of dollars down and can you hold it for me until next pay period? Absolutely. Not yeah. a problem. So this is where we see it. And um, I get it. Yeah. What right? about, 
what what about skates? What do you think is sort of the the difference of going yeah that top level versus the intermediate? Yeah, so right away, you know, we'll when a customer comes into the store and says, "Hey, we need some new skates," um, you know, it's not we're not selling you a pair of Burks, yeah, right? Yeah. We're not just gonna pull them out of the box and sell them to you. So we're gonna ask the yeah, proper questions. Time. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Great, minds. Great minds. So so we're gonna take that sale and we're gonna ask questions now. How many times a day or, or sorry, how many times a week are you on the ice? That that right away tells us, okay, this player's on the ice one to two times a week, probably not looking at the top level of skate. They might be, but it's is it necessary? No. But if they want to have it, why not? But the point we're trying to make here is that if you're that five to six time a week athlete, you probably don't want to get, get into that bottom price point because you're just going to open up a can of worms. It's not to say that that skate isn't good. It's to say that that skate is not meant for that athlete. Yeah. Uh, so you'll want to, you know, you, you'll want to be honest with your retailer. Or tell them, this is how many times I'm on the ice. Um, my foot, we're going to look at your foot and we're going to see if you have a, a lower high arch. We're going to see uh, if you pronate supinate. We're going to look to see narrow heel, wide heel, because we know that now Supreme fits one kind of foot, Vapor fits another kind of foot. Now it's great that we have the scanning capability, 3D scanning capability from both CCM and Bauer to help us help the client get the ideal skate at, at that point of purchase right so um you know it's important to know how many times a week you are on the ice if you're five to six times a week that means you're you don't want to have to put your foot in a soaking wet skate all the time mm -hmm. so the higher end skates are are better able to uh reduce the amount of sweating perspiration that uh that the player has they dry quicker uh they have a more than likely a, a different form of composite boot which is less resistant to breaking down because wetness is the enemy here. Mm -hmm. If you're always putting your foot in a wet skate and it's not a composite based skate, it will break down quicker than a composite based skate. So over the long haul of a, of a season of five times a day on the ice, plus now you're in summer, you're training at your favorite goalie place three days a week, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those are the differences, and this is what we try to explain to the clients. There are different skates out there. We're going to try and match you up with the one that fits A, best your pocketbook, B, the amount of times on the ice, C, the player's brand wishes, and, and the fit, obviously. So, I mean, you got to know what you're talking about. Uh, you know, for example, I fit into a CCM Super Tax skate. Great. But it's a little bit wide in the heel for me. So, FT2 skate for me is the best fit in the heel fits me like a glove however a little bit tight at the forefoot but we can fix that so if the heel is great that's awesome we can the heel is great now we can punch out around the tender spots at the front of the foot punch it out to to make the skate fit better not even having to touch the heel bang you walk out of the store with a skate that fits like a glove right yeah yeah what about um swapping out the stock steel um in skates what what do you see as the advantages of that or is it is it necessary anymore i i think when i just look at some of the new skates it seems like they you know they've sort of upgraded the steel but i don't you tell me yeah good question we haven't uh it doesn't have the impact on it like it did years ago when uh when the, for example, the Bauer cowling or the Reebok cowling had the had the shorter steel in it, uh, step steel stepped in and provided, you know, uh, a taller millimeter blade. So that was great. It increased push angle for the players, which was something that was a really big buzz, uh, probably about seven or eight years ago. Guys wanted a better push angle. You know, you could achieve that through the vertex cowling in a Bauer skate, for example. But because they made the blade easily changeable quick in quick out uh it allowed step to step in no pun intended and produce that taller steel where guys got that deeper push angle that and that's thanks to you people like you maria helping kids get better with their conditioning and the exercises that they can do to uh be more flexible um all that stuff 
plus the training they do, they were finding that they weren't happy with the amount of push that they could get in their skate. So the step, the taller steps deal addressed that and helped them get stronger, better transition pushes, all that. So now we find it's not as necessary anymore. With the removal of the cowling, there's less skate interference on the ice. So now nobody produces really a go-to taller steel that's taller than all the other ones out there now. The standard steel that's in a Bauer skate or a CCM skate now is by default, three millimeters taller. So kids are getting that taller steel that they that they want standard in the skates already. What has changed now is the carbon steel blade. That's the black steel, if mm -hmm. you will. That yeah. Uh, yeah. we've had feedback from customers tell us that they feel that they can get maybe an extra ice or two out of it before they need to sharpen it up again, and that's more resistant to uh, to dings on the post, for example. Yeah. So that's kind of like a win-win there. Um, and the other thing that a lot of people forget about too, is that when you are adding a taller, thicker, you're adding weight. So to needlessly, you know, with the skates now, without cowlings getting, being able to achieve that deep, uh, push angle, they don't need to add a taller steel, which adds more weight. So now they're be, they're able to maintain the light weight of the skate as it's designed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and still have the great uh, push that they can achieve now with the great steel that is on the skates. Yeah, and it, it, having that taller blade also adds torque to the hip and knee, which again, I think, you know, it's like, yeah, and it, it's, it's, it's hard because, it, and I have this discussion over and over again where people say, no, no, my knees and hips feel fine, like it doesn't bother me, but it's like FAI in particular, that's an over, that's a cumulative trauma injury. So it's not, you know, it's like a disc injury in your low back. It's like, well, nobody blows out their disc unplugging the television. Like some, you know, some people say, well, what did you do? Well, I bent over to un like plug in the television and I herniated a disc. Well, you know, that's the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, yeah. But it, you set yourself up for that injury by, you know, sort of years of, of wear and tear and micro trauma and, and femoral acetabular hip impingement is the same kind of thing. So it's like, yeah, it might not hurt at all now, but then you're going to, you know, when you're 21 years old, you're going to be like, hmm, why am I losing rotation? And, you know, and then, then you're in the hole. <laughs> and you can't you can't back your way out of it so it's interesting. Again, i think i think bowers maybe made their blade holder a little taller too because you know they want that feel right and goalies want right. the feel and 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 injury prevention doesn't sell but it's a little like oh you know so yeah that's like i like that point too like yeah definitely now it's like without a cowling like nobody needs to be going to a taller it's it's so interesting that you're saying that because We've both met Carrie Price. We've been fortunate to spend, uh, be able to spend a day with them at the Carrie Price event that we do uh, with Eli Wilson. So, you know, talking with Carrie when we do these events is, has been a huge eye opener for me um, because Carrie is a smart guy. Carrie doesn't make changes for the sake of making changes. So, you know, when I see Carrie switching back to a graph cowling, lower, he's not chucking on the big steel. Pecorine has now done that. So I asked myself, okay, these are smart guys. This is their job. This is their livelihood. They're doing this for a reason. So, you know, a uh, little disappointed that unfortunately Carrie Price Day was canceled this year I because know. that would have been one of the first questions I asked them. Yeah. I would have like, we, he's had it last year. He had that stuff last yeah. year, but we, we never, we never talked about it really. We just assumed it was a choice he made because he wore graph skates in the past and maybe he went back to, but you know, yeah, I was, uh, I'd be interested I was, in his answer. I was in the room and somebody asked him about it and he was like, in his, <laughs> in his fashion, he was like, yeah, yeah. Like basically that, like I used to wear graph skates and I always liked the feel and I like the feel of the cowling. Yeah. So. But I wonder if there is something else, you know, I wonder yeah. if there is something else. Maybe he's, Maybe you coach them and said, hey, this acetabular, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe that, I don't know. But, but I just, I find it interesting all the time when a guy like Kerry Price makes changes uh, because they're made for a reason. They're not just made uh, off, I don't think anyways, uh, 
just off the hip and he's trying something, you know, no. for, for no reason. I think there's a strategy behind it and he believes that it will help him stop more pucks and win a Stanley Cup. That's yeah. the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we got a chance. They're up two two games to one. Uh, I know. Series. So we'll see. Um, Peter, yeah. it's been awesome to chat with you again. And yeah, I am so sorry we aren't going to get to spend time together uh, out in BC this summer. But yeah, I uh, hope maybe my path will take me to Calgary sooner than that anyway. Um, so I can get into your store. But until I can, uh, I know that so sometimes we order things on the interwebs. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and anybody can do that, right? You do you do on some online business too we right now we're just switching over to we will be going to online sales we'll have an e-commerce website for the first time now uh however uh man uh the volume of uh anybody can dm us anytime at instagram my staff and i uh work that every day um listen we can we sell stuff through instagram all the time uh it's it's not a it's not a hurdle that we can't jump so i mean absolutely uh yeah. when our website gets open maria i will make sure that you're the first person well second because i'll yeah. know about it for you so <laughs> yeah You'll let be me know. One, you know yeah and yeah. on instagram well and it's worth following you everyone should be following you on instagram already anyway because you show like such amazing setups but it, you are at pro skate goal yeah that's us at Pro Skate Goal, absolutely, on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook. Perfect. Well, Peter, thanks again. I know you're just about to open the doors to the shop and uh, have, another dog, right now. have another dog show. Yeah, <laughs> they're all looking in the window. Yep. So I will let you go. But thanks again for sharing your time. I super appreciate it. We'll talk again soon. You too, Maria. Take care. All the Cheers. best.